Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Our guest today is a good friend, Florian Grooves, founder of Midas Touch Consulting. Florian, welcome back, sir. Thanks, Ivan, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you on Wall Street Silver. I wanted to get you back to talk about everything that's happening in the crazy world and in the markets. Uh, we'll start off, though, with Federal Reserve. Everyone online has been talking about how the, Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve is completely trapped. Uh, and they have no way that they can cut interest rates in the upcoming months or even this year or next uh, without inflation getting worse. What do you think about that, Florian? Yes, we've seen the Fed brutally rising or raising interest rates uh, in 2022 mm -hmm. and last year in July. And since then, the market basically is wondering, like, when will the first uh, rate cut come? And if, if you remember in December, the market already had priced in, I think, six rate cuts for this year. And here we are, mid of July, and none of them has happened. And you're right. I think it will be difficult for them to cut at the moment because some of the inflation numbers are still high. If you go to your grocery store, you will see that most of the food prices are up at least 5 to 10% over the last one, two years, uh, if not higher. And um, the assumption that... Um, a rate cut would basically spur, or spur more uh, uh, speculation in the market again, would also lead, of course, to more inflation because uh, if your stock market, if your real estate, if your crypto, if your precious metals go up, then uh, you feel more wealthy. That means you're easier to spend your money, which then means, again, uh, the, the velocity of money uh, speeds up and yeah. um, there is simply more uh, movement in in the in, in the system and probably people bid prices higher, roughly speaking. So I think uh, it, it will be challenging for them. But I think at the same time, uh, we're seeing there's also uh, I mean there is a lot of things that doesn't add up at the moment. I have to be very honest with you. Like what? Like what? Yeah. On the one hand, you we know that most of this so-called strong U.S. economy is basically thanks to fiscal stimulus, which is running out. Uh, it's also been because of the massive money printing since the COVID crisis. Right. And um, at the same time, uh, you have only a very few stocks uh, holding the stock market rally up, basically, which is mainly NVIDIA and a few other AI and tech stocks. Now they're coming down since the, uh, the failed assassination of, of Trump on, last, uh, uh, on the last weekend. Um, at the same time, uh, you have a rather weak oil price, which is not really speaking for a strong economy. You have actually weak housing prices. Uh, mortgage uh, uh, um, business is very much down everywhere in, in, in America and also in Europe. Right. Uh, prices came down. So there's a lot of different kind of like aspects to the market that don't really fit together. You have an in, inverted yield curve. And you have very high interest rates on, on the forefront. And, and uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's it just feels like something is not right. Do you... And it feels a little bit like we are somehow probably, I would say it feels to me, it feels like summer 2008. Kind of. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask that, uh, Florian. You, uh, you, you lived through the 2008 financial crisis. I was still very young. Uh, so I didn't understand what was going on, like when I was in elementary or junior high. But uh, you went through 2008, and what what are the similarities from the 2008 financial crisis to now? Yeah, I mean the the the, the Fed back then had int uh, raised interest rates as well and kept them up much uh, too long, right? So much. And at the same time, the the breadth of the stock market was very thin, very similar to today. You've seen also crazy moves in the commodity sectors, like oil went up to 150 and then collapsed down to, uh, I think, 30 or 50 dollars within a few weeks. That was actually one of the, the starting points of that uh, financial crisis back then. Um, you've seen gold first making a new all time high at one thousand thirty eight dollars and then coming all the way down to six hundred eighty dollars just six months later. The gold uh, went down to six hundred from a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went down. It was it topped out on the day that Burr Stearns declared bankruptcy at one thousand thirty-eight dollars, new all-time high, 
And then it went down until early November, uh, within the following six months, basically, it went down to $680 and your mining stocks got completely smashed. I mean, it was well, a terrible... I, I wonder why, you know, people always say like gold, uh, if there is a financial collapse, gold will go up. But in 2008, if, if it went from $1,200 to $600, will it do the same thing again now? So that's my thinking. And that's what I'm trying to tell people because... I went into the financial crisis in 2007 and 8, fully invested in mining stocks and, of course, precious metals physically, right. thinking that totally safe and prepared for what's coming. And when it happened, it was a liquidity crisis and suddenly everything went down and people needed money and they had to sell whatever they had uh, to, to get collateral. They needed to, to pay their margins. They needed to get come up with money. So they had to sell their gold, physical gold. They had to liquidate their ETF positions. They had to wow. sell their money. And they had to sell everything else. And the only thing that went up was uh, the dollar. And uh, something very similar we've seen um, in the Corona crash in 2020 in March. And that's basically what we've always seen. And that has been a big learning lesson for me. So if we get a liquidity crisis, you have to uh, assume that your uh, gold and silver prices will come down. And you will have to assume that uh, your mining stocks probably will get slaughtered. Um, it, we don't know how long it would take. Uh, we learned last year that the Fed came to the rescue within one weekend. So maybe it doesn't take uh, a right. half a year, year like in 2008, but it could still take a few painful weeks or months until it really plays out. And until there is enough pressure that then the Fed will step in, they will step in and they will print more money again. But right now we are not there yet. They, I think, try also to, to remain or maintain a more or less neutral position in front of the US election. So... Mm -hmm. They will try to not do anything, I, I assume, uh, unless the market is forcing them. Um, so we have to see. It's a very tricky, unclear picture. Uh, my assessment is that in comparison to uh, October 2022, when the markets basically, all markets bottomed, so silver, gold bottomed, stock market bottomed, Bitcoin bottomed. Now it's actually the opposite. Every all, Any of these asset classes went up really nicely. And and you don't have any bears anymore. Everybody's bullish. Everybody's expecting higher prices. You see right. the sentiment uh, now, especially for, for silver and, and gold, uh, being rather very optimistic. Bitcoin came down already uh, significantly a few uh, weeks ago, it has catched up and, 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 and bounced hard since then. But um, stock market is still, I think, way too optimistic. So, And we have a seasonal uh, pattern, sell in May and go away. So I think the upside is probably limited over the next two months, while the downside could maybe even be significant. But just even if it's just a normal five to ten percent breather in the stock market, I could imagine that it affects everything. And we've seen now uh, this week uh, a crazy roller coaster in the gold price, yeah. which also leads to me that something is wrong in the markets. Uh, it doesn't really look healthy. Um, so coming back to your question, I think. The Fed will be forced at some point to lower rates again. But as you said, uh, rightly, this will spark a new wave of inflation. And, um, and so they try to keep as long as possible uh, these high interest rate levels. But at some point, the market will frost them because the market is addicted to liquidity like a drug addict. And um, right now, any and other uh, measurement that I look at is slowly but surely uh, basically deteriorating and step by step, we have less liquidity in the market. And, and you have the inflation uh, data coming from the government that's underreported and not calculated the way it was uh, back in like the 70s, 80s or even up to the 90s. Uh, what do you think the real inflation rate is right now? <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the, the how do you say the perceived inflation rate? Right. Uh, is I would say it's probably somewhere between eight and ten percent. I mean, if you look at your insurance uh, costs, uh, uh, if you look at grocery uh, shopping, I mean that's I mentioned already. If you look at your the bills that are from a dentist or from a doctor, any medical bills, basically, uh, I think most of the stuff is 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 up significantly and continues to 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 be. Uh, I mean, nobody's lowering its price uh, prices, no. right? No, they only give in deals. McDonald's given a five dollar deal for just one month, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, but, no, but uh, a very important point, no? If you want to have really good, healthy food, like very good organic meat, 
man, I mean, it's crazy. Oh, it's, it's super expensive. Beef, everything, like steak, anything good, any type of good food. Uh, but, but Florian, I also wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, like as we get into this gold, gold and silver market and uh, a lot of people are taking more interest just because of the climate of the world right now uh, and all the geopolitical issues, are you investing in, in silver and gold now or how are you protecting your portfolio? Well, I mean, I've been buying gold and silver physically for the last 25 years. Wow. Uh, uh, I learned to improve my timing with the with the time. I learned to improve my timing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, I I mean I I I I'm fully invested. I uh, I'd like to add if it comes lower again at these prices right now. I'm certainly not buying aggressively because it's just been. I mean, if you compare to where we are now, and there's this really started. I said it before in October 2022. Uh, gold bottom, triple bottom at 1615 today. We are trading at uh, twenty four hundred, so basically eight hundred eight hundred dollars higher or fifty percent higher. So that's a significant price increase for for the good old gold. So um, there is no need for me to buy aggressively more. I mean, I'm well invested, so yeah. that's that, and that's my core position. Uh, I don't change that, and that means also that I'm always invested. I don't miss any move, so I'm easy going basically. I don't have to feel like I'm missing anything here. Um, I'm a little bit reluctant to be aggressively invested in the mining stocks at this point, because as I described before, I feel like there's something wrong in the market. And um, the fact that the mining stocks have been lagging so much tells me there is something wrong. And, and we also have to uh, talk about the fact that this uh, rally is mainly driven by central bank buying physical gold and by uh, the Indian and the Chinese and not by your normal American, Canadian, German, European gold uh, investor or, or trader. Yeah. And therefore, uh, the, the, the mining stocks in the Western world are not being really bought and chased. You can see that the Chinese mining stocks have done, done really well over the last few uh, months. Uh, but there is no real appetite for, for the classic Canadian, American South American mining stocks uh, in the Western world at the moment. And that might change at some point, but uh, mm -hmm. right now I still feel like there's something wrong. And that's also true, right? For all your normal value stocks. And uh, I mean, the Russell 2000 hasn't done really well. It's been actually very disappointing. And I also mentioned that before. NVIDIA has been one of the few stocks that basically has been pushing up uh, the, the stock markets. So uh, it feels like it, it's a bit of an unhealthy situation out there. So I don't have the need to be fully invested at the moment. I feel like over the summer months, a little bit of a cash position at the sidelines will give me options towards into September, October, when usually the bigger market participants come back into the market and then there's more volume and more action. And then usually that's the best time to be invested from, let's say, late September, early October up into April and May of the next year, right? Absolutely. Do you think uh, it's going to weigh on the Federal Reserve, like because it is political, uh, the election season is in now, they won't do anything with interest rates? Do you think they have to go by that or no? If there's a bank collapse, they're going to step in. Oh, yeah. I mean, if there's a bank collapse, they will definitely step in. Um, uh, they might also step in if there would be any case of civil war or anything. But that's yeah. all black swan, hard to calculate right now. Um Generally speaking, if everything stays normal, I, I would assume they will try to not do anything until the election. Yeah. So, so Florian, I, what do you do at Midas uh, Touch Consulting? What What do you guys? Like, how long have you been? Uh, when did you start it? Why did you start it? And yeah, talk talk a little bit about it. <laughs> well, I I I mean, I started investing in in the stock market about uh, thirty years ago. And uh, I started investing in precious metals, physical gold, about 25 years ago. So back then, all the precious metals dealers had shut down because we had this 20-year bear market in the 1980s and 1990s. So you couldn't just go somewhere and buy physical gold. Maybe there was a weird kind of dealer at, 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 at the central station, but that's not really the places where you would like to buy it. <laughs> So I bought my first Kruger round, uh, Kruger round on eBay back then. What? And, no way. To, to get it 10% below melt value because nobody cared. <laughs> and luckily, of course, I had to check the coins because 
back then, I mean, I had no clue what I was buying, of course, but luckily there was neither any scammers or anything that you have to be aware now. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the whole sector, the whole world of gold and silver changed dramatically over the last uh, 20, 25 years. And here in Germany, you have lots of dealers, professional big dealers, uh, trading houses everywhere now where you can see, touch, uh, get a feel for the physical product, where you get really good help and a good service. You can compare prices online. I mean, this has changed completely. And I think it's it's very helpful um, for, for the, the precious metals investor. So yeah, I started back then. And once you have an ounce in your hand and you feel how heavy it is and you compare <laughs> it to the paper uh, uh, that, that, that you would have to pay for it, you you quickly get down into the rabbit hole, right? And that happened to me, of course, as well. And once you realize that it's it's a paper fake uh, Ponzi scheme that we're living in and uh, gold and silver have been money for the last 5,000 years, then yeah, it's like there's no stopping anymore. And um, and then, of course, I had the, 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 the bull market 2001 to 2011 was helpful as well. If you start investing in something and it goes into the right direction and you see yourself making money, yeah, you get even more excited. So back then, gold rallied from $250 up to $1,920 within 10 years, and it was an amazing bull market. But also back then, I had to make a lot of painful experiences with the mining stocks, right? I mean, the physical has yeah. always been easy and good, no problem at all. But the mining stocks have been always a tricky kind of thing because you have to be an extreme contrarian. You have to really wait until there's panic and blood in the street, basically. And then if you if you catch them and buy them, you can easily make not only 100%, but in some cases, five to 10 beggars. Um, but if you just buy and gold has been already running up like crazy and you assume now I buy my mining stock and it's even having leverage and it will go through the roof. And then suddenly you have to realize <laughs> like, oh, it's not working like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good. Well, I appreciate you, Florian, for coming down to Wall Street Silver. It's always a breath of fresh air for you coming down here. Uh, again, thank you, everyone, for watching. And hopefully, Florian, as the uh, market develops, we'd love to have you back on. Okay, for sure. Thanks, Ivan, for having me. Awesome. Talk to you soon.